Pacha, apaburi na ka, ala ng bulaklak. Meron nga nagsabi-sabi niya, pinangako niya sa akin na ikukwintas niya ang mga bituin sa langit. Kaya sinagot ko siya, noong napakasaw ko siya, ayun, gabi-gabi nakikita ko ang mga bituin dahil binububog pala siya, no? So, uh, of course, di lahat ng mga lalaki ay sinungaling. Meron pong mga ibang lalaki na tutuo kung magsalita. Okay? The question is, sino sila? But, you can, uh, you can know it. Sabi nga, paano kung makikilala kung tutuo ang akin manliligaw o akin nililigawan? Yapakan mo ang kanyang paa. Pacha, may nagkasiyang katakot-takot. O kaya, in just, sabi nga, in just five minutes, you can know what kind of person they are if you are very discerning. Sakaling slow learner ka, in just one day, you can know what kind of person, individual, ang taong yan, no? Just in case talagang very slow learner ka, in just one month, you know. Okay? Kaya, Mahirap kasi yung hindi niya ginagawa, pinagsusumikapan niyang, yung alimbawa, baloktot siya, pinagsusumikapan niya maging matuwid, hindi po magawa yan, ah, mahirap po yan. Pero isang matuwid, ano yan eh, lifestyle yan eh. Ah, kahit saan mo siya dalhin, it's the same person. Bahil, da, an, bakit? Dahil nakakilala kay Lord at ang buhay ay nilaan kay Lord. Kaya, you can know for sure. Kaya, kayong mga babae, huwag kayong magmadali. Uh, eh, eh, kayo mamaligwa. Huwag niyong pandara ng puso niyo, puso niyo, mabubuntis kayo kagad. I, I, I told the young people sa Valentine's Banquet, and even, I, pero hindi ko yata na-stress sa, sa mga young professionals. I have seen godly men and women, spirit-filled, Serving the Lord without uh, yung bang untiring service kay Lord. Pero nung ma-inlove sila, bigla na lang nawala. I've been here for 35 years, I know. Nung ma-inlove sila, bigla na lang nawala. Before you will uh, know, pagka nalaman mo later, buntis na pala, tapos bugbog sarado siya, kawawa. Because... Yung bang pinandar niya kanya puso, hindi naman ito, no? Ang ibang babae naman, puro, pag, uh, puro ang pinapakikinggan niya, kanyang, uh, kanyang utak. Kaya yan, tumandang dalaga, tumandang binata. Kailangan na uh, uh, both extreme, yung masyado mapusok ka, no? Pinakinggan mo ang iyong puso, masyado ka naman logical, pinandar mo ang isip mo, kailangan balansi po ang... Uh, yung utak tsaka puso. Gawin natin balance eh, no? At huwag kayo magmadali. The test of time is very important. Uh, a few announcement I want to give. Una, sa Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we will have our annual immersion. So, ang immersion po natin this year, 2018, ay sa Wednesday night, 6 o'clock in the evening. Ay, uh, uh, bring your Bible, bring your uh, notebook kasi magkakaroon tayo ng covenant with God this year 2018. What do you want God to do for you? And what you are promising God uh, to honor Him this year? Napakahalaga po na, uh, na humingi kay Lord. Sabi niya, you have not because you ask not. Sabi ni Jesus, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find and knock so that the door will be opened unto you. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give the desires of your heart. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and everything shall be added unto you. So this, this is your time, your personal time with God to make a covenant. At the same time, commitment to God this year 2018. Kaya... Kung ang iba ay nagpapanata, eto, this is the best time. Because God is a God, is a covenant working God. What He promised, He promised. Kaya, 
uh, gawin po natin to, no? Uh, if you are serious about your supernatural breakthrough, if you're serious about your house and lot, if you're serious about your car, about your increase in promotion, about your breakthrough in life, about your future spouse or your partner, future, a future business, and this is the time to immerse yourself, to soak your, your soul, your spirit, the presence of God. Invite all you can invite para makita nila na ang Diyos na ating sinasamba ay buhay at makapangyarihan sa lahat. This is the time to challenge God. This is the time to dare God. Is His Word really powerful? Is these promises from His Word are real? This is the time to dare challenge God. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I forget na sa Thursday pala, 33rd anniversary na namin ni Ate Edita. Nakalimutan ko kanilang umaga na wala pa man din ang misis ko ngayon, no? Wow! You know, pinagsagaan ako ng misis ko for 33 years. Grabe. Yung tanso naging ginto. Yan po nagagawa ng pagsitsaga. Kaya kung kayo walang tsaga, yung ginto maging tanso. Okay? Pero yung tanso, dahil sa yung tiyaga, dahil sa ating pagmamahal, lalabas ang ginto sa kanila. Kaya, yan po. At for those of you who attended the, the couple's banquet, yung A Night to Remember, I know some of you were disappointed. It's because noong Sunday, Sunday ang ultimatum na binigay sa atin ng ating caterer kung ilan ang dadalo. And of course, Dahil konti ang response ng mga kapatid, siguro namamahalan sila. So about 90 couples ay na-confirm. But I, I, I dealt with uh, our caterer. Sabi ko, give us until Monday night. So umabot po ng 110 ang uh, confirm na dadalo. So na, namalingki na po ang ating caterer ng uh, early Tuesday morning at uh, Naghanda na po at naglagay po siya ng buffer up to 300 uh, nakakain. But ito po ang napakagandang nangyari. Yung last minute, yung banquet na binagsapo tayo ng mga couples. Kaya supposedly tigda dalawang sugpo, tigda dalawang slice ng beef, tigda dalawang slice ng, ng manok, eh, biglang dumagsat tigitigisan na lang, iba kalahati na lang, iba ulo na lang, no? So, uh, uh, sa lahat po ng medyo malungkot at hindi yung, hindi na yung expectation o na, na frustrate, just, uh, just like I promise, you just come to me and I will return it 10 times. Yung 2,000 nyo, maging 20,000. I'm dead serious about that. Sakaling na frustrate kayo, I'm willing at my own pocket to return dahil wala po kung hindi po yung pong mga ganyang gawain, hindi ko po pinakikilaman yan, hindi ko hawak ang pera. Even the, the church money, wala po kung nahawakan dyan. Okay? It, it, dalawa po ang ating business, uh, workers sa business uh, office natin, hindi ko po pinakilaman ang pera. So if you think I am making money out of this banquet, you are completely wrong, okay? So uh, it's all it will it, it all being managed by the church. Uh, we are just the one who is proposing for church to have this banquet. Kaya wala pong napupunta sa akin sa lahat po ng mga offerings natin. Tinatanong ko na lang kung magkano do you do we have problems in paying our monthly bills? Uh, hanggang October na lang ating mga air conditioning ang ating air conditioners, our sound system, ang ating LED screen. Imagine, eight months na lang ang ating bayaran. And the Lord delivered us in the last 14 months kay buti-buti ni Lord. Palabakan natin siya, no? Ay, uh, uh, the Lord is so good in providing for the needs of this church. And I thank God 
tuwan-tuwa po ako na marami sa inyo umuulat, umangat, umasenso at pinagpapala ni Lord. Praise God for that. Okay? So our series for today, for this month is Your Kingdom Come in Our Family. Last Sunday, Your Kingdom Come in Our Marriage. Our, our topic is Your Kingdom Come in My Life. Then next Sunday, our topic is Your Kingdom Come in Our Household. Okay, uh, sana, I hope this is very clear to all of us. I said, just like the prayer of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Ang gusto ng Diyos, maranasan natin ang langit dito sa lupa, ang nakakalungkot, marami ang nakakaranas ng impyerno dito sa lupa. Hindi po yon ang uh, kalooban ng Diyos. Ayaw niya tayo nagdurusa. Ayaw niya tayo nasasaktan dahil mahal na mahal na mahal tayo ng Diyos. That's why His prayer, Your kingdom come, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Bakit? Para pagdating natin sa langit, no more adjustment. Kasi kung hindi tayo makapag-adjust dito sa lupa, kung hindi natin maranasan ng langit dito sa lupa, pagdating natin sa langit, baka ma-heart attack tayo, grabe pala ang, bi- ang buhay dito po sa sangkalangitan. So, this afternoon, our topic is, Your kingdom come in my life, in our lives. Ay, uh, this is the word of God. Many, we have many, many verses that we, are, we will discuss and we will read. Yung John chapter 1, verse 12, pwede po nating basahin na malakas. Ready? Read. Okay. Makita niyo po dyan, yung word, receive him, believe in his name. Anyone who believe in Jesus and receive Him as personal Savior and Lord, they have the right, the authority, to be called children of God. Sabi ng iba, di ba lahat tayo anak ng Diyos, tutuo po yun, nung likhain tayo. Pero nagkasalan tao, nawalay, dahil sa kasalanan, nawalay sa Diyos. Nung si Kristo ay nagkatawang tao, at namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo, para tubusin tayo sa ating kasalanan, at manumbalik sa Diyos, sa pamagitan ng ating pananalig sa Kanya at pagbukas at pagtanggap ng a, sa, at sa Kanya, tayo po ay nagkaroon ng karapatan, kapangyarihan na matawag na anak ng Diyos. Tayo po ay pinatawad ng Diyos kaya nagkaroon ng karapatan na anak ng Diyos. Sabi ni Apostle Paul sa 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, pagibasa po nga natin ang malakas, ready read. Therefore, ang sino man nakipag-isa kay Kristo, ang sino mang nanalik, binuksan ang puso at tinagap siya bilang sariling Panginoon at Kabaligda, siya isang bagong nila lang. Sabi ni Apostle Paul, ang mga dating buhay ay nagsilipas na at ngayon pawang bago ang kanyang binubuhay. Nabubuhay noon sa, sa kasamaan, ngayon, Siya po'y nabubuhay sa kalwalatian ng Diyos. Both Jesus Christ, our Lord, and John the Baptist, I, they preach just one message. Akala natin, Jesus Christ has many messages. John the Baptist and Jesus Christ, they preach just one message. In Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist Verse 2, and Jesus Christ in chapter 4, verse 7, pareho po ang kanilang pinangaral, repent for the kingdom of God is near. Sa Tagalog, mga sisi kayo, dahil ang pagkahari ng Diyos ay nandito na. Kaya uh, ang word repent is the word for change of mind. But in uh, yung pinaka uh, practical explanation yan, it's just like from being a sinner, 
you turn around, now you will become a saint. From being a child of the devil, you turn around and you will become a child of God. From darkness, you will turn around, you are now in the light. Yan po ang definition ng repent. Kailangan talikdan mo ang, da, ang ginagawa mong kasalanan at manumbalik ka sa Diyos at ibigay mo at manalig at magtiwala at buksan niyong puso at gawin mong Panginoon at kapaligtas. When we repented of our sins, King Jesus becomes our Lord and Savior. Marami sa atin ang tumatanggap kay Jesus, just Savior but not Lord. Gusto nilang tagapagligtas lang, pero hindi Panginoon. Pagka sinabing Panginoon, siyang nagmamayari sa ating buhay. The Lord of our life, He owns us. He is the owner of our entire being. He is the Lord of our lives. He is the Lord of our lives. Pagka Savior, tagapagligtas lang. Maraming mga born again, tagapagligtas lang. Kaya walang pagbabago. Pero the moment Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, magbabago na ang buhay mo. There will be a visible manifestation of change and transformation sa ating mga buhay. We will be called sons and daughters of the Most High God. And it is found in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. Next Sunday, mag, mag appear itong message na to, yung outline na to sa ating uh, Sunday bulletin. Nilagay ko lahat ng mga verses nito for you to, to find out. You can, dis, you, can, you can discover it by yourself and study it. According to Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, Noon tayo na born again, we become sons and daughters of the Most High God. We begin to live His kingdom. And as children of God, we belong to the kingdom and we now citizens. We are now citizens of the kingdom. You see, uh, pagka tayo po ay na born again, tayo po ay isinilang sa kaharian ng Diyos. Nagahari na ang hari sa ating puso. The King of Kings, Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords in our lives. We become His citizens. And then, we have our constitution sa Ligang Batas, the Holy Bible. You see, pagka kayo po ay pinanganak dito sa Pilipinas, ang tatay mo Pilipino, ang nanay mo Pilipina, automatically, you are a Filipino citizen by birth. E paano ang mga cesarean? Well, kayo na mag-explain sa kanila. Ako, I am a natural-born Filipino citizen, not a cesarean. Okay? So, you are automatically a Filipino citizen. And the, Philippine, uh, and, the, uh, and the Filipino citizen, meron tayong saligang batas, constitution. Why? Para meron po tayong batas na sinusunod. At pagka sinusunod mong batas, wala kang problema sa otoridad. Pero sinusunod mong batas, ayon, TNT ka, tago ka ng tago. Kahit saan na lang, punong-puno ka ng takot. Basta ang isang tao may ginagawa, na ginawa, ay may nagawang kalakohan o kasalanan, matatakutin yan. Pero the obedient citizens, kahit sila magpunta at saan, wala problema. Why? They knew, they knew na wala silang ginagawang masama at kasalanan o paglabas sa batas. We are not just Filipino citizens, but we are also heavenly citizens. So October 28th this year, I will have my third citizenship, senior citizen. Sino sa inyo dito ang mga senior citizens? Excited ako dahil ang daming beneficyo. Pero mo, pagka bumibili ka ng pagkain mo, 20%. At ang matindi dito, meron sariling linya ang senior citizens. Kaya kahit saan ako magpunta, sabi ko, but but wala yata kayong senior citizen line? According to DTI, merong dapat senior citizen life. Pagka sinabi mo yun, magpo-provide ka agad ng linya for senior citizen. Hindi nila alam, hindi pa ako senior citizen, junior pa lang. Okay? 
So, and then you, you go to the government services. Pagka magbabayad ka, merong linya ang senior citizen. Pero ngayon, nagkakaroon ng problema, umahaba na ang line ng senior citizen. Bakit? Marami na pala ang nagiging senior citizen. Sa October, Diyos ko, baka mas mahaba na ang linya. So anyway, we are not just a Filipino citizen to enjoy the benefits of being a Filipino. And then when we become a heavenly citizen, we will enjoy all the benefits of being a child of God, of being a citizen of the kingdom of God. And God is a loving Father. Sa bansang Pilipinas, maraming mga palpak na nabatas at palpak na nangunguna kaya marami sa atin nagsasuffer. We are taking advantage. Taking advantage because we don't know the law. But when you know the law, you should fight for your rights and people will never take advantage of you. In the kingdom of God, the same. God is your father, perfect ang batas niya, perfect loving God. Kaya napaka-blessed po natin. The question is, the problem is, we don't know our rights, our privileges, our benefits and blessings of being a child of God, of being a citizen of the kingdom of God. Where can we know that we are citizens of heaven? According to Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, let us read. Ready? Read. Our citizenship is in heaven. He's talking about the, the Philippian believers. Na, na, mga na born again, nakakilala kay Lord. You have a heavenly citizenship. All rights and privileges, benefits and blessings of the Father to you. It's all yours. Kaya, how did it happen? Because our sins are forgiven. Tayo po'y nagsisi. Tayo sumampalataya. Binuksan ang ating puso. Tinanggap siya as Lord and Savior of our lives. Sabi na Ephesians 1.7, In Him we have redemption. Tinubos tayo sa kapangyarihan, sa pamagitan ng kanyang dugo, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of His grace. God has forgiven us. Kahit na gano kasama, kahit na gano kalawa, kahit na gano katindi ang kasalanan mo, when we ask God's forgiveness, God will forgive us. Because He loves us. He's just waiting. Naghintay lang na tayo po'y lumapit at humingi ng kapatawaran and God will forgive us. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 14, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Nung tayo po ay, uh, ay tinubos, hindi lang tayo tinubos, tayo po ay pinatawad. Pinatawad. Hindi pa lang patatawarin, pinatawad na. Nung tayo po ay nagsisi, sumampalataya at tinanggap siya as Lord and Savior. Not just, we are, not just being forgiven, Tayo po ay nagmamay-ari. Meron na tayong eternal life. Buhay na walang hanggan. Where can we find this? Very obvious in John chapter 3 verse 16. The greatest love, the golden verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world. For God so loved Frank Santos. For God so loved uh, Banjo Bandasan. He gave His only begotten Son, one and only Son. Kaya whoever believes in Him will never perish but have an everlasting life. You will never perish in hell anymore. Instead, you will be forgiven. Not just forgiven, you will receive and possess a new life which is eternal life. Hindi na tayo magdurusa sa walang hanggang impyerno, kundi makakasama na natin sa wala hanggang buhay ang Diyos, ang Panginoong Heso Kristo at ang lahat na nagsitanggap, nanalig at na born again sa kalangitan. One of the most explicit, vivid, maliwanag na pangako ng Diyos sa lahat na nagsisi, sa lahat na na born again, sa lahat na tumanggap sa Kanya, three powerful blessings 
that we receive. Tandaan niyo po ang two words dito. Those who hears His word and those who believes Him. Ang sabi ng Bible, look at the word, has eternal life. Crossed. Okay? Crossed from death to life will not be judged. Tapos na. Bakit? Tayo po'y nagsisi, tayo po'y nanalig, tayo po ay pinapasok sa ating puso. Nagkaroon na tayo ng buhay na walang ganda, magkakaroon, nagkaroon na. Hindi ka na mahatulan ha? at lumipat na mula sa kamatayan tungo sa buhay na wala hanggan. Powerful words. Ang problema sa ating mga born again, we don't know who we are and whose we are. That's why sinasamantala tayo ng demonyo. Kaya hindi natin pinakikinabangan ang ating mga blessings at hindi nangyayari itong mga beneficyo na para sa atin. That's why here in this church, we emphasize the constitution of being citizens of the kingdom. We want you. We emphasize the word of God in our daily devotions. Every morning, pagising mo pa lang, basahin mo na ang batas ng Diyos para sa iyo. Ito, hindi lang malaman ang iyong karapatan at ang mga biyaya at pagpapala na nilaan niya para sa iyo, kundi ma, ma, a, yung bang ang pananampalataya mo. Lalago. At pagka ang pananampalataya lumago, sabi ko sa iyo, you can activate the power of God and you will become the kind of citizen not only in the Philippines, but the citizen in heaven, it will manifest here in the Philippines. Yung blessings and benefits of it. Just in case, ang demonyo magtanong sa'yo, oh, hindi ka pinatawad. Eh, sabi ng Diyos, pinatawad ako. Saan? Ay maliwanag sa John chapter 5, verse 24. Maliwanag sa Ephesians 1, 7. Maliwanag sa Colossians 1, 14. Ang, ang sabi ng Bible, ay hindi totoo yan. Makulit ka, o ikaw na nga magbasa. Pagka hindi lumayas ang demonyo. Our authority, our powers, and all these blessings ay maranasan ng bawat born again kung alam niya at alam gamitin ang kapangyarihan niya. Kaya hindi natin naranasan ng mga pagpapalat, biyaya na para sa atin dahil ignorante tayo, kagaya ng isang Pilipino, hindi alam ang kanyang karapatan bilang mamamayang Pilipino. Niloloko, dinadaya, at pinagsasamantalaan na manloloko. The manloloko in the Philippines are the demons. In the kingdom of God, they are the demons and satans, mga satan and his demons. But if you know who you are, and if you know whose you are, the devil will never take advantage of you anymore. Sabi ni Prophet Hosea, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. But because you know the secrets of the kingdom of God, the blessings will begin to manifest. The favor will begin to manifest. The power of God will begin to manifest. Heaven will come down here on earth. One of the most, most powerful truths pinakamaliwanag na, mag, na katotohanan na ikaw at ako ay pinatawad ng Diyos at binigyan ng buhay na walang gan, it is found in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. It is like in the court of law where the prosecuting attorney and the defense attorney standing before God and the accused is Frank Santos and this is the witness, the evidence, this is the powerful evidence that God has given us eternal life and this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that so that you will know. Hindi, hopefully, maybe, probably, 
but the word of God said, so that you may know. This is absolute. This is certain. Tiyak sigurado that you have eternal life. Now, in the court of law, if they will examine the accused, they will ask you, who gave you eternal life? God. What did God give you? Eternal life. Where can this life be found? In His Son. So if you have the Son, what else do you have? You have eternal life. How do you know for sure that you have eternal life? Because the Bible says so. So that you will know. Kahit anong gawin mong i-cross-examine ang 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 13, examine it, cross-examine it. If you know this, I want to tell you and I want to assure you, your kingdom come and it will manifest here on earth. The devil will never take advantage of you because you know the truth. As Jesus Christ said in John chapter, one, chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, and the truth will set you free. The truth will unlock the gates of heaven. The truth are the keys, the keys that will unlock the gates. The secrets of the kingdom of God is the truth of who we are and whose we are. That's why every time you see the cross, you must rejoice, regardless of your situation in life. Kahit punong-puno ka ng pagsubok, problema, pasanin sa buhay, every time you see the cross, it is done, paid in full, mission accomplished. That's why the devil cannot take advantage of you anymore. The enemy cannot take advantage of you anymore. The cross paid it all. All our sins, it has been redeemed. Nasangla tayo dahil sa kasalanan, tinubos tayo dahil sa kanyang kamatayan sa krus ng Kalbar. Thank God for the cross. It, it will give you hope and a new beginning no matter how broken you are, no matter how desperate your situation is, I tell you, there is hope for you. Sabi ng tao, hopeless. Sabi ni Lord, you are full of hope. But I am so hurt. I am so ruined. God said, my son, my only son died for you to give you a new life. You can start again beginning today. Noong tayo po again, not only we receive forgiveness, at nagkaroon tayo ng buhay na walang gan, but we receive these blessings too. Once you have learned these three powerful blessings, I tell you, no matter how difficult your situation you are in, no matter how impossible your situation you are in, it will break, the heavens will break loose and the powers of God will manifest in your life. Nung tayo po ay naborn again, tayo po ay tinawag ng mga anak ng Diyos. We become sons and daughters of the Most High God. Look at the word, the, the, the promises of God. Sabi niya, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you a slave. Pagmasayin yung word, slave. Nung tayo ay naborn again, you are not a slave anymore so that you will not, you live in fear again, you will not live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought, receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. Abba, it implies intimacy, closeness. Father, my father. Tai, my tatai. Daddy, my daddy. My daddy. You are not afraid to call and to cry to his name. 
and you're excited to your Abba Father, Daddy God. Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Not just my emotion, my feelings. How do you know that you are a child of God? Feeling ko eh. Pakirandam ko. That's not a good basis. That you are a child of God. Your feeling will deceive you and may deceive you every now and then. But our basis is the truth of God's word that we are children of God, not our feelings, not our emotions. It's the truth. And the one that testifies that we are children of God is the Spirit of God. And the Spirit that was been quickened, don't tie the born again, na buhay. Kaya, the Spirit of God and the Spirit in me testifies, yes, I am a child of God. It is like Channel 7, uh, Quezon City, nandun ang tower. And then you have your TV. Wala ka pang cable, pero meron kang antenna. You put on your TV at nilagay mo sa Channel 7, at ang Channel 7 sa Quezon City, the, the tower from Quezon City and your antenna, the same frequency, and you will get Channel 7. That is in the natural, in the spiritual, the Holy Spirit of God and the Spirit within me testifies that's a powerful evidence. Not your feelings, but a truth, a powerful evidence that we are children and sons of God. That's why we cry, Abba, Father. To redeem those under the law, according to Galatians, that we might receive adoption to sonship, because you are His sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls, out, who calls out Abba, Father, for the second time. So you are no longer a slave. Di ka na alipusain. Di ka na alipinin. You have been set free. You are now God's child. And since you are His child, God has made you also an heir. Hindi ka na alipin. Hindi ka na alipusain ng kasalanan ng demonyo. Kayo po at ako ay pinatawad kaya malaya na at tinaw, tinaw, binigyan tayo ng bagong position which is we are now sons and daughters of God. We are children of God. Pangalawa, nung tayo po ay naborn again, we become heirs of God. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed, we share in His sufferings in order that we may also share in His glory. To tuong pagkaikaw na born again, we are not exempted to trials, to problems. Ang katotohanan nga, mas matinding problema. Kaya lang, ang pagkakaiba, kasama na natin si Lord. Dati rati tayo nagbubuhat ng ating mga suli na problema. Kaya kawawa tayo. Ngayon, sabi ni Jesus Christ, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Ilagak mo lahat sa paana ng cross, and you will find peace, solace, at kapahingan sa Kanya. We are now heirs of God. Sabi mo sa yung katabi, sampalin mo siya, nagpapanggap kang Yagit heredera ka pala. Hello. Sabi mo sa katabi, high five. Hello, fellow heredera. Heredero. Ha? Hindi ka na yagit. Noong hindi ka born again, yagit ka. Kahit mayaman ka, yagit ka pa rin. Kung wala kang Kristo, yagit ka pa rin. Pero ngayon, Kristo ka, kahit mahirap ka, heredera ka. Mula sa araw na to, si Sibol ang pagpapala at hindi ka na muling magiging yagit, magiging heredero ka ng Panginoon. These are the truth of God's Word. Kaya yung kasinungaling, kasinungalingan ng demonyo na napaniwala ka na ikaw ay mahirap, na ikaw ay talunan, na ikaw ay magdarahop, that is already 
has been broken. It is now a lie. The truth is, you have been forgiven. You are now a child of God. At manaka ng Dios. Ayas sabi ko sa inyo ang hamon ko noon. Kung ikaw ay naborn again five years, in five years, magtapag na kay Lord, maglingkot, magsamba, magobey, at ibigay mo ang kanyang ika po at mag, magtanim ka na magtanim pagka hindi ka pinagpala. Itong hamon ko, lahat ng binigay mo kay Lord, kunin mo. Pati ng sasakyan ko, kunin mo. O di kaya, nagtapat ka kay Lord, Nag-obey ka kay Lord, naglingkod ka kay Lord. After five years, mahirap ka pa rin. Pagka nakita ka sa, sa, sa daan, sasakasahan kita. Hindi pwede magsinungaling si Lord. Baka ibang klaseng Kristo ang tinanggap mo. But the Christ who died on the cross, ang tinanggap mo, your life will never be the same. Ang buhay mo ay magbabago, pati na ang kabuhayan mo. You are heirs. Tagapagmana, heredera. Kaya every time we obey the Lord, every time we worship the Lord, every time we thank the Lord, and we give our offerings, you are opening the gates of heaven. You are receiving, hindi nyo alam in the spiritual realm, you are receiving supernatural blessings and favor. Huwag kayo makinig sa mga hindi naniniwala sa Diyos. Nililibak ang mga Diyos. Itong pastor nyo mo kumpera. Tingin mo nakalang cruiser. Mga kabatid, the reason why a, a person from the barrio, hindi po ako umaman dahil ako'y naging bishop. Ako'y umaman nung ako'y naborn again. At nung ako'y sumunod kay Lord, ako po, na, nalaman ko sikreto, sumunod ako kay Lord, at akong unang-unang nagkakalob sa inyo, nakita nyo, every Sunday, akong unang naguhulog. Not just the not just the tithe, even my my Thanksgiving offering and everything I do. He did die like a bishop, kaya ako pinagpala. Ako pinagpala dahil ako anak ng Dios. Amen. Kaya pagkasinab nila, oh, ang bishop nyo, siya lang uh, yung mayaman, siya lang ang uh, yung mga lahat ng offering nyo na pupunta sa kanya. That's a lie. Don't believe them. Go to our office. Every gay, everyone who gives, nakarecord doon. At wala kang makita na pinakikilaman kong pera ng church. Kung gusto nyo malaman yan, stick with me, be with me for just one week at magtanong ka sa office, e kung pinakikilaman ni Bishop ang pera ng TFBC. And then tell them that my Bishop, kaya siya pinagpala, dahil in 1977, June 2025, second year in college, na born again, and he found the secret, and he is a believer, and applies the word of God. That's why the heavens was open, and the blessings came upon him. 41 years. 41 years of born again. Na sumunod kay Lord, nagtapat kay Lord, until now, and excited to serve him. Kaya ako pinagpala, ikaw, four months pa lang, may nangyayari na, ipakayang 41 years na ako born again, na nagsisip-sip, naglilingkod kay Lord, I never turned my back. The moment I got saved, I never turned back. The moment I served the Lord, I never turned back. Kaya if you think, ako'y umaman dahil ako'y bishop, nagkakamali kayo. No moment ako'y na born again, Ako'y naging heredero ng Diyos and I believe in that. That's why I am a recipient of these blessings. The same with you. The same with you. So you are no longer a slave for the third time. No longer a slave. But God's child. And since you are His child, God has made you an heir. Diniklara ng Diyos na ikaw ay tagapagmana. Not because of what people say, but because of the blood of Jesus at I the born again and according to the testament of God, you are now a child of God and because you are a child of God, tagapagmana ka. Just like Joshua and Dali, 
It's like Badet and Henry. Everything I have, it's theirs. Why? I am their fathers. I am their father. I am their, uh, uh, the head of the family. Everything I have is theirs. Kaya hindi ko pwede ipagkait kay Joshua. He can drive my Land Cruiser. He can have everything I have because he is my son. The same with Dali. The same with Badet. The same with Henry. The same with my wife. Just like, eh kung ako, na hindi naman perfect yung ama at perfect yung asawa, I am so kind and generous to them, yung pakayang ama ko na nasa langit. Yung pakaya ang Kristo na namatay para sa akin. That's why, not just a child of God, kundi naging heredero ng Diyos at dahil heredero at anak ng Diyos kasamang nagahari kay Kristo. For if by the trespass of one man dahil sa kasalanan ng isang tao si Adan nagkasala na hiwalay sa Diyos but the death of one man his name is Jesus Christ we, learn, we reign with Christ we reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, we reign in life, not in the future. We reign in life now. The authority, the power, the anointing that God has given us, we learn to reign and to rule over life. Kaya no problem can swallow us. We're the one who will swallow the problem. Kahit anong klaseng problema, suliranin na ating naharap, hindi tayo pwedeng lamunin yan. Tayo ang lalaban dyan. God has the solution. God has the answer. And because of the authority, the anointing, and the power, and the grace of God over us, we can overcome. We are not survivors. We are overcomers. If you think you are survivors, wrong. We are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. Amen po ba? Pala baka natin si Lord. Because of the authority. If all of you young people are really taking this message seriously, young people, this is very powerful. A businessman, this is very powerful. Managers, employees, fathers, mothers. Basta born again kayo, these teachings is very powerful. These teachings changed my life. It changed the course of my destiny. This is a very powerful teachings. If you're serious about success, serious about prosperity, your house and lot, new car, New business. Listen to this message carefully. Nung tayo na born again, nabuksan ang pintuan ng langit. We become citizens of the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, there is king. His name, Jesus Christ. He's the king of kings. And that son is also the Lord of lords. If you are wondering why Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, ang tanong, who are the kings? Who are the lords? That's you and me. He is the king of the kings. Lahat ng mga born again, you rule with Christ, you reign with Christ, you are a king. I am a king in my own kingdom, my family. I am a king. If you are a businessman, you are a king in your business because you own that business. Nobody can dictate to you because you are the owner of that business. In this family, I am the head. I am the king. But I have the king too. His name is King Jesus. If I have a problem in my family, King Jesus, I have a problem with my family. Please help me and then the king will help me. King Jesus, I have a problem with my business. Then the King Jesus will help me run my business. King Jesus, I have a problem with my children. Then the King will come and help me handle the problem with my children. 
Mahabadi, this is a very, very powerful truth. We reign with Christ. We reign in life with Christ. God raised us up in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. He raised us up with Christ and seated us. seated us with Him in the heavenly realms. It means you are rulers too. You reign, you rule with Him. Not only in this, in the future life, but today at present. You see the problem, the religious people, among religious tao, religious preachers, they always bring you to your future. But what, what about my problem today? They always bring you to, the, to your future. Wag kang magalala. Born again ka naman. Pagka namatay ka, may higirong ka namang mansyon sa langit. Kahit nagdarahong ka, nagduro sa ka, dito sa lupa, pagka namatay ka na, mamatay ka, kung born again ka, punta ka sa langit. Abay, magpakamatay na tayo kung ganyan ang isip mo. There is a solution for every problem today because the King Jesus solved it and you as King, you can, you can solve all this problem because God has given you authority, anointing, power, wisdom, strength, ideas. Kaya, yung kahirapan, pwede kang umaman, sakitan, pwede kang gumaling, may problema sa familia, pwede maayos. Because you rule your family, you rule your finances, you rule your health, kaya malusog ka. You rule your business with fear and trembling. These are the threefold blessings ng tayo na born again. Tayo po ay naging anak ng Diyos, tayo naging takapagmana ng Diyos, tayo ay binigyan ng karapatan, kapangyarihan to rule and change the course of our lives from poverty to prosperity from sickness to health from being a loser to become a winner from being sublime palpak now you are an overcomer that's the blessings we receive the apostle paul says in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 ang sino man nakay kristo sa isang bago nila lang ang mga dati ay nagsilipas na now that we are born again, let us begin to think, to talk, to act, to walk, and live like a new believer. We have this new character. Ito po ang dapat ayusin natin mula ngayon. Ang ating asal ugali. And this character involves the way we think. The way we talk, the way we act, the way we live. And the best way to change our character is the Holy Bible, the blood of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. We will submit to the Holy Spirit, and when we read the Bible, you will see lahat na mga kagaspangan natin sa buhay, mga dating ugali na hindi kalugod-lugod kay Lord, dating asal na hindi kalugod-lugod kay Lord, and all this lifestyle, yung bisyo, unti-unting mawawala yan. Katigasan ng ulo, unti-unting mawawala yan. Yung pagiging masaway, unti-unting mawawala yan. Your, your pagiging mareklamo, unti-unting mawawala yan. Madaing, unti-unting mawawala yan. Your negative thoughts, Negative languages, palamura, unti-unting mawawala yan because heaven is now coming to influence our lives. We are now the children of the light. We represent God here on earth. At pagka tayo na born again, very, there is a obvious distinction sa mga born again, sa di born again. Kahit magaling sila, ibang klaseng galing na mga born again. Kahit masipag sila, mas masipag ang born again. Kung meron silang favor, mas favored ang mga born again. Because theirs is the world. Ours is the creator of the world. 
That's the big difference. Kaya mga kabatid, a new character, a new language, a new thinking, a new attitude, a new lifestyle is beginning to manifest. A Christ-like character. We're not perfect, but they know we are better than yesterday. We are better than others. They see the distinction, the big difference. They see. If you're a student, dati-rati, kulelat ka ngayon, unti-unti ka ng tumatas. And if you are an employee, dati-rati, tatamad-tamad ka ngayon, iba na. Kung ikaw ay manager, palagi marami kang backlog sa mga kota mo, now, namamayagpag ka. In any aspect of your life, student, professor, teacher, professional, irregardless politician, because of the new character we have in Christ, heavens is invading the earth, and the earth has no more power over us, particularly when you know who you are and whose you are. The reason why na influenza ang tayo ng mundo, because we don't know who we are. The Constitution is still unread. Still, ang namamayagpag pa rin, nagahari sa'yo, is the old Constitution. We are committed, now that we are born again, we are committed to be humble, to be holy, and to be honest. To me, this is what I call integrity. The new, the, the, the new vocabulary of integrity is integrity. Yan ang mga kapampangan. How do you know that you, ha, you are a man of integrity? You know he is humble, he is honest, and he is holy. Do not judge people with what they see, what you see. Alam mo, maraming Pilipino, inusgaan tayo, hindi ka magkilala, uusga ang kanya. Ngayon ko lang nakit, nakit, nakita, uusga ang kanya. That's the people. That's who we are. But when you are with these people, you'll begin to understand what kind of people they are. Ang aking binana, I told this morning, nung una nila ako nakita, they don't like me. Lalo na nung nalaman na kapampangan ako. Ilocano sila. No nalaman kabampangan ako ay kahit pastor yat anak ayo ako jan ang yabang yabang ang presko presko pero ngayon magpapakamatay para sa akin na akin binan you cannot judge people there are people na presko presko maingay akala mong yabang yabang but they are the humble the humblest person in the whole world Meron kang makita ng tao, ang tahi, tahimik, silang pinaka-proudest people in the whole world. You cannot judge people by, their, by, by its cover, by their outside appearance. But kahit na gaano ka kayabang, kahit na gaano ka ka-proud, pag ikaw ay na-born again, uhubugin ka ng Diyos to be humble, dahil babasagin ka ng Diyos, to be holy, and to be honest. That to me, that's integrity. This morning I was reading in my daily devotions, yung 2 Samuel chapter 11. It's the chapter where David, it, during the time of war, hindi siya lumaban, naiwan sa kanyang palasyo, at doon ay namamasyal sa tuktok ng kanyang palasyo, mayroong nakitang babae na naliligo at pinatawag niya at siya po ay nagkasala ng adultery. At nung sabi ng babae na siya pregnant, pinatawag kagad na kanyang asawa na si Uriah at to go home and live with his wife. Nung hindi niya makonvince si Uriah, he sent him in front of the battle where, where the battle is so fierce siguradang mamamatay sa doon, he committed two powerful uh, sins violating the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill. When I examine the life of Uriah, Uriah has more character than David. Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 11, pag-ilabas nga. Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 11, 
kahit na katakot takot na pag-convince ni David kay Uriah, Uriah did not submit it. 2 Samuel, please. Chapter 11, verse 11. This is what Uriah said. Hey, multimedia. Nakikinig mo sila? Okay. Look at what Uriah said to David. I want you to read. Ready? Read. The ark and Judah are staying in tents. And my commander Joab and my Lord's men are camped in the open country. How could I go to my house to eat and drink and make love to my wife? As surely as you live, my king, I will not do such a thing. That's integrity. That's character. When everyone else is enticing you, giving you favor, you cannot submit to destroy your character. Yan ang kulang sa maraming born again ngayon. Meron kang credentials, but you lack character. This is what is needed today a new character. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, this is the clearest verses in the Bible na ating iwaksi ang dating pamumuhay at ipamuhay ang bagong buhay. Let us read. Just follow along with me. So I tell you this and insist on it. In the Lord, but you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. In the futility of their thinking, what do Gentiles do? Ano classic lifestyle we have in the past? The futility of our thinking, they are darkened in their understanding, separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. Due to the hardening of their hearts, having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality, puro kalibugan, so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in Him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off Iwaksi mo na. Alisin mo na ang dapti mong suot. Hubarin mo na ang dami, dating pagkatao. Put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood, speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one another. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil an opportunity. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands. That maybe may have something to share with those in need. Do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, of whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ in God has forgiven us. A new character. A new way of life. A new way of thinking, a new way of perspective, a new language, 
a new heart. Passionate now for the things of God, not for the things of this world. Secondly, a new culture. In Christ, we are committed to be disciplined. Ang kulturang nakagisna natin walang disiplina. Ang kultura nakagisna natin tatamad-tamad. At punong-puno ng mediocrity. Pwede na yan, tama na yan, ipasam mo na yan, pagtsagaan mo na yan. That's mediocrity. Walang passion, walang heart and soul in what they do. Look at the students. They are studying, but their heart is not there. Bagsak. Average. But if you are a Christian, that's enough. Lalabas na ang tunay na ginto. Dati tanso, ikaw lalabas na ngayon. Ang tunay na ginto in you. And so determined to fulfill your destiny, your dream in life. Nobody can put you down. Nobody can encourage you to quit and to give up. Because you are so determined for your destiny for your dream it must be fulfilled it must i must see my house and lot my car my my success my victory a new culture of faith and obedience without question ask committed to to be generous and hospitable to be faithful and fruitful committed to win souls and make disciples committed to use my home and my resources to open cells and to serve God. This is our second year in this church. Our goal is to fill the first service and the second service. Bawat isa, magdala lang ng isa, mapupuno na tayo this year. Kahit wala kang espiritu ng Diyos, kung isa lang ang madadala mo, madisciple mo this year, doblado na tayo dito, puno na three services. How much more if your heart and soul is burning for the lost, burning for God, the more we will bring people. And God Almighty, the more we serve Him, the more we worship Him, the more we obey Him, the more we activate our faith, the more blessings and favor and benefits He will pour out to us. You know what excites me, what really blessed me so much Sunday after Sunday? You know, there are so many churches inviting me to come to preach in their churches. But I made it a point at least once a month I will leave this church to bless other churches. What really excites me is doing Sunday, I've been watching all of you coming here. Alam mo nakita ko, families by families. Nakita niyo yung pamilya nakasakay ng tricycle. Ang saya silang pumapasok. Kita mo yung isang pamilya nakasakay ng jeep. Bababa dyan sa harap. Ang saya nila pumapasok. Kita mo yung mga kotse. Na ibababa ang pamilya nila dito. Ang saya-saya. And now, this morning, jump pack both outside and inside. Double parking ang mga sakyan. Because the Lord is blessing these families who loves the Lord, who honors the Lord, who worships the Lord, and who serves the Lord. A new culture na dati-dati walang sigla, walang saya, ngayon excited to come to church together as a family. If this is our priority, if this is our culture, I want to assure you, my dear parents, pagka nakita ng mga magul, mga anak natin, ang mga magulang mismo ang nagpupursugi, Sunday after Sunday, so excited, then we are not so scared of the next generation because we set the example, we raise the bar of faithfulness, of loyalty to God Almighty. They, have, they are seeing a role model in us parents. And the people around us, our friends, our neighbors, they see a whole family together in top. You're not perfect, but you have a better family than theirs. They are, they are much richer than you are, but you are much happier than they are. They are you are so secure, they are so insecure. They are so afraid, and you are 
so safe in the hands of God. A new culture na lumalabas sa TFBC. A culture of loving God, of serving God. A culture of, ser- of worshiping God together. A culture of faith and obedience. A culture of generosity and hospitality. A culture that we are chasing God. And you want to honor and please the Lord. You found the secrets of the kingdom of God. This, my friend, is a new culture. A new thinking, a new perspective, a new language, a new heart, a passion for Jesus, a new lifestyle, a new way of living. People see that, and you are distinct and different to others. This is what the kingdom of God has done to every one of us. Lastly, a new community. Now that we are connected to Christ, we are now connected with our family. And not just connected with our family, we are connected to cells. And not just content to be connected in our cell group, a small group. Now we are connected to the church, our community. Because I am now connected to Christ my Lord, so I will get connected to cell and to church. Why? So that I can grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. All of us. Walang naiwan. Walang may sumasablay, pero tinatayo muli ni Lord. May mga problema, pero you are full of hope. Nasasaktan, but willing to forgive and ready to move on. There are so many problems. The more problems we encounter, the more courageous we are to face them, knowing that we can overcome all these problems. And these problems are just preparations for our greater blessings and breakthrough in life. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7 So then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your life in Him, rooted and established, built up, strengthened in faith as you were taught and overflowing with thanksgiving. What kind of community that we need to be connected and now that we are connected to Christ, We are connected in our family, connected to cells. Why connected to cells? This is a small family na dadamay sa'yo, na magpipray sa'yo, na mag-intercede sa'yo, mag-encourage sa'yo, who will push you to your limit, who will stretch your faith, who will inspire and motivate you. That's the cell group. Somebody who will father you, somebody who will mother you, somebody who will take care of you. Regardless of your situation, like they will be always be there for you. That's the cell group. And you will reach out others. It's not about you, but about reaching others. Because God has reached your heart, now you reach others. As you grow in the Lord, you are reaching others, and they are, they are growing also in the Lord. A community where I am accepted for, I, for who I am. Love unconditionally where I belong, where I feel that I am somebody without judgmental and condemning spirit. A community to help me to become a better person, to help me succeed, to fulfill my destiny, my dream. A community to help me to become fruitful and multiply physically, financially, and spiritually, to be blessed. And be a blessing. You see, every human being needs this basic primary needs, actually. As a human being and as a person, as a pastor, as a husband, as a father, as a person, as a human being, I need to be loved and to love. Every one of us. 
We want to be respected, to be appreciated, to be affirmed, acknowledging even my little contribution. This community should have no prejudices. There should be no partiality. There should be no favoritism. Walang mahirap, walang mayaman, walang pinag-aralan, walang may matasa pinag-aralan. We are all equal at the feet of Jesus, saved by the grace of God. We are all sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are all herederos and herederas. We have equal authority and anointing in the name of Jesus and the power of the blood. This community will help the helpless. The hopeless will find hope. This community, kahit alam beses ka bumagsak, this community will help you rise again. Kahit binagsagan kang sablay, this community will help you succeed. The people outside, they will call you, you are, you are hopeless. Ang lolo mo mahirap, ang tatay mo mahirap, kaya ikaw maghihirap din. But this community will help you not just succeed, they will help you to become prosperous and become overcomers. No matter how hurt you are, nagdurugo, basag-basag, sugatan, this community will patch those hurt and pains because of love and this unconditional love. Kahit na gaano kawasak ang pamilya mo, this community will pray and interested for you so that God would intervene and restore that home. No matter how bankrupt you are, this community will help you rise up and become the head and the tail, blessed and extremely blessed. This is the secrets of the kingdom of God. That we are sons, we are heirs, and we are rulers with Christ. And as children of God, a new character is being rebuilt. It's being formed inside of us. Of course, we're not perfect, but we are much better than others. A culture is beginning to manifest. So much discipline, so much dedication, so much devotion, so much diligence, so much determination, so much love, and so much acceptance of its other. And a new community where everyone is somebody, where everyone, they belong and they are love. They feel that they are VIPs and MVPs because of Jesus who died for us. This, my friend, is our prayer, your kingdom come in my life and in our lives. Tayo lahat eh, tumayo please. Pakatingnan mo yung katabi. Sabi mo sa kanya, no matter how broken you are, you can be made whole. You are not hopeless. You are not helpless. Nandito ako, kapatid. If you are, if you are so, you are, if you are hurting right now, masyado kang nasaktan, nagdurugo, na disappoint, na discourage, dito papasok ang isang church, isang community ready to help, ready to do the extra mile, willing to sacrifice for and on your behalf. If this church will not become a community, then the whole world, there is no more hope in this world. Thank God, Jesus established a church, and that church it's only identification 
is Christ, the one who died. Full of love, full of forgiveness. That's why everyone has a lot of hope. Lahat tayo ay magtatagumpay. Lahat tayo pagpapalain. Lahat tayo maging malusog. Dahil pinagaling ni Lord. Maging heart specialist. Hindi nakatitisuran, kundi daluyan ng pagpapala sa bawat isa. At sa maraming tao na wala pa kay Lord. So that they too would experience the love of God and the forgiveness of God. Tayong lahat, taas, pwedeng taas sa ating kamay, and then let us shout, Your kingdom come in my life. Your kingdom come in my mind. Your kingdom come in my language. Your kingdom come in my perspective. Your kingdom come in my family. Your kingdom come in my marriage. Your kingdom come in my children. Your kingdom come in my finances. Your kingdom come in my health. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Praise God. See you next Sunday. You may be seated for a while. Thank you, Bishop Frank. Thank you for that powerful message. Okay. Bago po natin tanggapin ang uh, bendisyon ng Panginoon, kung meron pong nakadikit na sticker sa inyong dibdib na nakalagay na VIP, kayo po ay napaka-special na tao sa lugar na ito. And we want to welcome all of you. Can I request all the VIPs to please stand up? Pakita yu po lahat ng mga merong sticker na VIP. Please stand up. Habang sila'y tumatayo, pwede bang palakpakan natin sila? Come on! Come on, TFBC! Give them a warm welcome. Yung palakpak pong yan para kay Pastor Dandan yan, tsaka sa team lang yan. Yung malakas na palakpak para sa ating mga VIPs. Sige po, anyayaan ko po kayo tumayo. Kung kayo po yung nag-invite sa kanila, tumayo rin kayo, samahan nyo po sila. Come on. Samahan nyo po sila para hindi sila nahihiya. Come on. Let us help them. Sila'y baguhan dito, kaya tulungan natin sila. Okay? Wow. Dami nating mga VIP. Sige po, hintayin po namin kayo. Meron pang lumalapit sa harapan. All right. Uh, sige, bigyan nyo na sila ng uh, token. Sige po, kantahan natin sila, Pastor Dan. Ako. Samahan po natin. Complication. Come on, let's join Pastor Dan Dan and his team. Let's welcome
Kayo po ba yung masaya na kasama natin sila? Are you happy that they are here tonight with us? All right. Come on, let us bless them in prayer. Panalangin po natin sila na pagpalain po sila ng Panginoon na ang magandang plano, kalooban ng Diyos sa buhay nila ay mangyari. Ta atin po silang idalangin sa Panginoon. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much sa buhay po ng lahat ng aming mga BIPs tonight. Panginoon, salamat po na sila'y dinala nyo dito. Ginamit nyo po ang kanilang mga kaibigan, ang kanilang mga mahal sa buhay, upang sila'y makasama namin dito. Pero Lord, the truth is, meron po kayong napakagandang plano, kaya dinala nyo po sila dito. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon. We welcome them in this place. Kami po ay masayang tanggapin sila sapagkat sila ay mahal na mahal mo, Panginoon. At meron kang napakagandang plano sa kanilang buhay. Lord, we pray that Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 nang sinabi mo, Panginoon, For I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Lord, maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, na ito ay hindi lamang nila naririnig, kundi ito ay maging reality, mapulfill sa kanilang buhay ang salita mong ito, Panginoon. Lord, we pray for them, na you bless them, Lord, sa lahat ng aspeto, financially, materially, physically, spiritually, Lord. In all aspect, Panginoon. Lord, we pray, Panginoon, yung full package blessing be upon them. At Lord, gamitin niyo po kami, mga TFBC, Lord God, maging Lord God, uh, uh, katuwang po nila, kaantabay po nila, katulong nila sa kanilang paglapit sa inyo, sa kanilang paglago sa spiritual na pamumuhay, Panginoon. Maraming maraming salamat, Lord God, for all these people. We welcome them in this place, in Jesus' name. And everybody will say, Amen. Amen. One more time, let's give them a warm welcome. Come on. Uh, sige po, pwede bang sumunod kayo sa ating uh, mga ushers? Kayo ay bibigyan ng Bible and they'll pray for you. Come on, lead them. Wow. Naalala niyo po ba na last Sunday ay binati natin ang mga nag-birthday this month? At yung hindi na bigyan ng so so late <laughs> so so late sino po yung mga nagbe-birthday this month na hindi nabigyan ng chocolate ha pwede bang tumayo sila at mabigyan kayo ah <laughs> uh, mga ushers please birthday ni madam uh, Ermi noong friday okay lahat po na nagbe-birthday come on tumayo kayo kung nabigyan na kayo uh, tumayo lang kayo pero kung yun ang uh, no, para hindi madobli yan, no? Okay? Para baka natin mga nagbe-birthday. Si Ate Wilma. Happy birthday, Madam Wilma. At tinaka-50 anyos. <laughs> Woo! Alright. Come on, uh, lahat ng mga nagbe-birthday. Uh, wow. Nabigyan ba si Mr. Alok? Okay. Sa likod, nabigyan pa lahat na nag-birthday. Please, uh, this is just a token, a simple token from TFBC that we love you and we remember you. Alam ko, mas masarap na chocolate pang kaya mong bilhin niyan, pero iba yung galing sa TFBC. It's a simple token, but it's not about the gift. It's about the gift from TFBC, no? Na hindi kayo nakalimutan naalala kayo, okay? Uh, ang panalangin namin, sana huwag muna kayong kunin ni Lord para ang pagpapala niya, ang biyaya niya, ang siyang lulukog sa inyo at sa iyo sa buong samahin. Tayo lahat eh, tumayo. Uh, sabihin mo sa inyo katabi, ito yung prophetic gesture natin, ha? Uh, gawin nyo, ha? Uh, just look at me. Ah, uh, pinagpala ka na ni Lord. Ha? Kasi, hindi ginamit ni Lord na kinukutsara ka na ni Lord. Ha? Kutsara kasi maliit lang. Eh. Mas maganda yung 
pinagpala ka na ni Lord. Kaya pala-pala, pala-palang pagpapala na sa iyo. Ah, sino naniniwala na pagpapalain sa ni Lord this year? Hey, amen. Wow. Woo. Grabe. Alam nyo, habang natutulog tayo, inihanda na ni Lord ang pagpapala pagkising natin sa umaga. Yung ating pagkising, nagpapasalamat ka na, and then si Lord ang iniisip mo. Kaya, sabi nga, aking kapampangan, panampalinga na kaning kanuanan. Paldak, oh, kumusta ka? O, ini, sikad, ay, paldak sikara na ako ng kanuanan. <laughs> I like that, no? Kumusta ka? Eto, pinagsisipa ako, pinagtatadyak ako, pinag, uh, pinagsasampal ako ng pagpapala ni Lord. Grabe, no? Uh, I like that. Do you believe that? Praise God. Come on, tasa ang kamay. Yes, my dear TFBC family, because you are a child of God, ikaw ay heredera at heredero, tagapagmana sa kanya kaharian, pag, pag, uh, man, uh, tagapagmana na maraming pera, na kalusugan, na katalinuan, na katagumpayan, tagapagmana ng kapayapaan, ng kagalakan, ng kaayusan sa pamilya. Kaya ikaw ay unstoppable, uncontainable ang biyaya, ang presensya, ang pagmamahal, ang patnubay, ang basbas ni Lord sa iyo. Tutungang pala-palang pagpapala ang sasalubong sa iyo. Dump truck na pagpapala. Truck-truck na pagpapala. Barko-barko ang pagpapala sa mga nagsisip-sip, nag-obey, nagtatapat kay Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, you are blessed when you go out. You are blessed when you come in. And this week, I declare in Jesus' name, is the most exciting week of your life. This week will be the most exciting week of your life because the blessing of the Lord will overtake you and will come upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are blessed. You are favored because you are loved by God. Amen and amen. See you next Sunday. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Enjoy your blessings in the Lord. And I'll praise you with all of my life. And I'll praise you with all of my strength. With all